I wrote a thing. I wrote a thing in the Lotus Eaters, and uh, it's upsetting. Because it's very popular. It's actually one of the most popular articles on the website. And it shouldn't be, because it's about free speech. I thought it's a done deal. I thought the conversation is over. The debate has settled. Scientists has arrived at a consensus. But apparently, no. Apparently, uh, now it is a partisan issue, I understand. The media is trying to make it that it's a right-wing issue, free speech. There was a survey in the United States asking people if they can speak freely or not. And except some fringes on the far left, everyone thinks they cannot speak freely. They're afraid. They're not afraid like in the good old days when my parents, if they misspoke, they would be sent to a gulag. No, you just lose your job. You end up being homeless. But you're not in prison, so I guess there's that. Man, advocating for free speech. It's like advocating for human rights, isn't it? It's something so obvious that no one should even advocate for it. It should be self-evident. Oh, wait. Free speech is a human right, isn't it? Interesting. I love the people that say, well, see, if it's not the government cracking down, then it doesn't matter. Like, the government is the only one that shouldn't crack down. Last time I checked, the government is made by the will of the people. If every single person experiences censorship in their day-to-day -day life, what do you think will happen? Of course, they're going to hire politicians that censor. It's just going to be their politician that censor the opposition when they get in charge. Jesus. You know how all of this started? Because it's brilliant. I, I was watching this train wreck unfold. In the beginning, the idea of censoring was um, just mind-boggling to the American mind. Because America was built on freedom. And you have a lot of leftists now going, well, what do you mean? America was never free. America had slaves. Well, it depends what you're comparing with. Because at the time, the comparison was Nazi Germany, Soviet Russia, the Imperial Japan, Fascist Italy. Yes, compared to all the other countries, America, with all the problems and the evils that a lot of intellectuals are complaining about, was a free nation. You're not comparing it with the utopia to the nation that... Every no, you are comparing it with other nations on the globe at the time. And yes, America had freedom. That's why a lot of people want to go there. Why I would want to go there. So it was a concept. It was the idea that they're not afraid of what other people think. It's, it's a country where you can have different factions of people thinking differently, but at the end of the day, they're all Americans. They're in this together. And they go there and they shoot the Nazis. Pa, pa, pa. And then they have Cold War with the communists, because then the communists were too strong. They had nukes. But what I'm trying to get with this is that first, you have the argument that, uh, well, we need to have free speech, but we shouldn't allow people to incite for violence. It's kind of reasonable, you know, because without this, the godfather would walk away. The godfather doesn't commit any crimes, right? He has the mafiosos, and then they commit crimes in his name. So, okay, fine. You know, that, that's, that's a good limiter. It's a good limiter. And then it's like, uh, we should have free speech, but you shouldn't say things that may lead to violence. Oh, well, hold on a little bit. Because now we're into the land of interpretation. You put a work of art, put a piece of art, and five different people watching the same piece of art are going to interpret different things from it. It's not the artist that's to blame. It's the person doing the interpretation. But okay, that was a limiter. You know, it's now it's things that may. So even if it doesn't, but it, if it may, then it should be banned. All right. Then it went with things that may be offensive. So all of a sudden, we, we agree with free speech, but not things that are offensive. Okay, fine. You know, like people st started sharing the same ideas, but restructuring the proposition, restructuring the phrase in such a way that it's not offensive. So you had talking heads, which... Instead of saying, you people, they would say, uh, I don't think your ideology has taken into consideration. Yeah, like that type of thing. But now it's literally getting to the point where 
I believe in free speech, but you shouldn't peddle misinformation. What is the difference between this and Nazi Germany now? What is the difference between this and the Soviet Union? Uh, wh where, where is it better to be in America than in uh, these other places? Because these other places also allow for free speech, but not misinformation. Who gets to decide what is misinformation and what isn't? I'll tell you who. The party, which is infallible. It's, it's never wrong. The party is always right. And this idea that um, if you censor, you're going to avoid violence is the most ridiculous concept that I have ever heard, which is why it's not even scientifically proven. Because, you know, you, you have people that are far more intellectual than me, and they always go, it's like, do you have a study for this? Do you have a study for that? Oh, look, you think this, but there is a study that shows... They don't have any study which shows that censorship is going to avoid violence. It doesn't even make sense. Like, look, if I would be looking at my smartphone and my fiance enters the room and sees a big booby there that looks very similar to the booby that my ex-girlfriend used to have. And the moment she enters the room, I, I just hide my phone and I put it under the pillow. And she goes like, uh, are you cheating on me? And I'm like, no, I'm not. And she goes like, can I see the phone? No, of course not. It's my phone. Why don't you trust me? And when she starts breaking in tears and crying, it's like, God damn it, Lucy. You're ruining this relationship. Does that work? No, seriously. Like, if, if you have a girlfriend or a wife, um, when she has a grievance, real or imaginable, fake or not, is refusing to talk with her going to make matters worse or is it going to make matters better? Because there's two conclusions if you refuse to talk. In my opinion, the best thing to do is to talk and, and air grievances and negotiate and try to convince each other of the common good. But if you don't talk, like talking is out of the table now, now we're in censorship land, there's just two options. The divorce, right? She goes like, I'm going back to my mother. That, 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 that. The other one is the worst one, the, the tyranny. That's the one. It's like, woman, if you raise my, your voice again, you know, like, it's horrible. Wife beaters, the most disgusting members of society. But hey, you know, I, I, guess, I guess that solves the issue. It's not, it's not going to be brought up. The battered wife syndrome. I mean, the, the issue is not on the table anymore. It's gone. No, talking is the, the best thing to do. Like, talking avoids violence. If you have a group of people which have grievances, then it depends. How many are they? If, if there's like a very small fringe minority of people, you can just put it under the rug. It's a bunch of crazies. But, it, but if the number is like staggering, it's just like, okay, it's rising, it's critical mass, you have to at least address it. You, you have to give them a fair shake. Because if you constantly ban and censor and go, shh, 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 you're not fixing anything. I remember uh, in my civic class, we had a civic class teacher. I believe it was in eighth grade. Eighth grade. That like I was so young, and yet I was able to grasp these concepts. And he explained why free speech was supported by the government, especially speech that goes against the government. And the explanation was that if people are allowed to, to air their grievances. If people are allowed to protest, then they do not get violent. No one wants to get violent. No one wants to go on the streets and do violent Be because it's it's bad. It's bad for them. It's bad for the community. It doesn't solve anything. So you allow peaceful protest. That's why you do it. But when you're shutting people up, it doesn't stop the problem. This idea that just shutting people up is going to prevent real world harm is something that is created by social media because they want to have power. And once you have power, you can still maintain it with tyranny. You, but, but at the end of the day, you, you are not being honest. You're not, you're, like, like tyranny is violence. The state will do the violence. It still exists. Um, it's horrible. You know, there, there is no single study that shows that censoring people removes world harm. I, I mean, what they're actually saying is that the reason the Spartacus revolts happened is because the Roman Empire didn't censor enough. 
The reason that the Tiananmen Square massacre happened is because the Chinese party didn't censor enough. Like, if only they would have censored a little bit more. Just, just a little bit more, all of the problems would go away. All the peasants' revolts in history happened because the peasants were talking. Like, if, if the censorship from the king was just, just a little bit more, they would have turned on that dial a little bit more, none of that would have happened. These people are cuckoo. Like, that, it, it's not rooted into reality. And, and by the way, this whole shtick with misinformation, like, all of a sudden, we believe in free speech and an open society, just, just not misinformation. This is literally the argument that the clergy used in order to disenfranchise the peasantry. How can the peasants be allowed to read the Bible without a priest next to them because the peasant is not going to understand what he is reading? How can we allow the peasant the right to vote because the peasant cannot read and write? He can't even understand the slogans he is saying. How, how, how can we allow him so much power if he is so dumb? Let the nobility vote. Let the nobility decide. These are not new arguments. These are very old and tired arguments that are just being rehashed because the overwhelming majority of people stopped even caring about what liberty is or why it's even important to have it. They take it for granted nowadays. And I notice this. I, I notice this because um, you read the press, you read the media, when is the last time they value freedom? Now they value other things. They value equity. They don't even value equality. They don't even talk about tolerance anymore. They don't even talk about acceptance. They talk about equity. That, that's the, the new champion that they have. Freedom is taking a backseat. In fact, freedom isn't even taking a backseat. It's outside of the bus. It's not even allowed to go into the bus. You talk about freedom, it's like a dangerous concept. Like freedom, what do you mean? Allow, allow people to think for themselves. Oh, Dios mio, horrible. We need fact checkers. I'm, I'm just curious how far is it going to go. Like, I'm reading the French Revolution now. And within the French Revolution, if you addressed a person incorrectly, if you said uh, monsieur, rather than calling them citizen, you would get the guillotine. Like, that's that's where it's heading. Like, I, I live throughout, through socialism. And it's so horrible because you need to be so careful what you say, what you speak. Like, people live in terror. They live in fear. They, they don't know, like, okay, if I say something now, if I complain about the price of bread, or if I complain about the, um, the, the, the huge queues that are forming for people to buy essentials like oil, cooking oil, it's important. You know, you take it for granted. Imagine life without cooking oil. It, it, it sounds ridiculous, but for some people it was reality. If you complain about that, oh, all of a sudden you're sent to a prison. That's that's what happens when you don't have liberty. But they did have equity. Uh, right. It's just what I wanted to say. A little bit of a rant, you know. Because uh, I'm curious, like, where is the limit with this? And better question is, is there a limit to this? Did, did you notice that there are no more controversies online? Did you notice that, like, recently, I, I happened to notice that back in 2016, you had a lot of controversies. You know, like, there was a problem... And you had different people like arguing in favor and against. And it was fun to participate. Nowadays, there's no more controversy. It's just like, this is the correct solution. Everyone that disagrees gets the ban hammer. How many controversies do you see on the internet, by the way? They are in real life. Like, I, I'm pretty sure like you still have people in real life that are like, oh, pro-life, pro-choice, this and that. You, you don't have these people in real life, but on the internet. On the internet, you don't. On the internet, this is the way things are. This is the correct solution. Everyone that's against the correct solution needs to be purged. Ban, account suspended, account locked, censored. We do this in order to protect people from real life harm. Oh, I'm, I'm so glad that Zuckerberg protects me from harm. Didn't you notice that the internet stopped being safe the moment social media companies decided to protect the internet from harm? Like the internet actually became a more dangerous place since social media companies decided to have trust and safety councils. I remember like back in the day, like four years ago, there was this news that just bewildered everyone. Just mind-blown people. It, it said that like a guy was fired because of a tweet. People couldn't believe it. It's like, what do you mean he was fired because of a tweet? Like he was in his own home. He was not during working hours. He was during his own house in his own bedroom. They're just like typing some shit on the computer. And everyone was like, just this guy was fired because of a tweet. That was just four years ago. 
how things have changed. So my question is, how are things going to be four years from now? I'll let you all to contemplate. Um, it's just a little rant. You know, maybe maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, I would like people to tell me why I'm wrong in the comment section. I, I encourage dissidents in my chat. Just tell me, this is why you're wrong, V. Okay? And show me a study. Like, this is what I want to see. A study that uh, talks about how censorship fixes things. And it's healthy. Like, censoring. And I'm not talking about, like, a couple of fringe people. Okay? I'm not talking about, like, censoring a small group of people who have like some really wacky ideas. No, no, no. I'm talking about like censoring large groups of people, like millions of people because they have ideas. That That's what I want to see. Like, when did that work out? Like, show me a study. That's what I want to behold. Let me know what you think, though. I'll see you guys in the comment section. Take care.